I think Ferrari got a feeling that this might be job done. Kvitsa Bollaway goes ninth with that lap, so uh, above Robin Freins, who sits 10th. What this does is to show how tight this field is, not only because we've got Ferrari, Porsche, Cadillac as the top three, three different brands, and five different brands in the top ten, but also because the car that is likely going to be on pole, the sister car, didn't make the top ten. That's how close this is. That's how even these cars are. Storming run from Alex Lim, but it's not good enough. He will stay third. It's a cracking display, though, from Cadillac here today. And what a mix-up we've got in the order here. I'm surprised to see Brendan Harley not a bit not further up. He's in the pits. I think that's his run that's come to an end uh, down in P7. I thought he would be a little bit higher than that. He was pressuring the Ferrari all the way through, wasn't he, in the, in the first round uh, of qualifying. But in Hyperpole, I don't know what happened, but uh, the, the time hasn't been there. Nine, nearly nearly a whole second away, actually, from Foco. Well, he did at least set a lap this time, which he, he didn't get to do last year. But Charmelacy, not quite in no. the top half dozen, but outside of row four with the Alpine, as you said, Graham, their first time in Hyperpole. So Matt Campbell, another stellar performance, but not quite enough to hold off Antonio Foco. I was wondering about what was going on there, because he chose to go through on what I thought was going to be a flying lap, and then was going very slowly. Yeah. So there's a problem there for the Alpine. And that is just at the bottom of the Kemmel Strait, so it's quite a long walk home from there. Well, that's not going to affect anybody's potential pole-sitting no. run. Robin Fries is on a reasonably quick lap. No, but I think, we, I think we've, we've all seen the best from the tyres. We've definitely seen the best from Antonio Fuoco. <laughs> He's happy with that one. Yeah, baby. No, a great effort from him. And uh, apparently, uh, Brendan Harley was complaining about too much movement, uh, particularly the rear of the car, uh, apparently, in that Toyota. So, uh, yeah, there's um, something to think about for tomorrow's race. But for now, Fuoco, once again, mighty, mighty in qualifying. He did it in Imola. And, uh, and it wasn't enough for the, for the race, of course. A lot happened that day uh, on race day. But, uh, yeah, once again, starts at the front. But Floco second here last year behind the number eight, uh, number seven Toyota that took pole. Number seven didn't make it through into hypercar. 50 was second. He's on pole. 51 was third. They didn't make it through. The caddy was fourth. They're third. So there's all sorts of shifting tectonic plates in this championship with, with different circuits throwing different hypercars into the mix as well as favoring or, or disadvantaging different GT cars. So there's Miguel Molina giving his teammate again another big hug. It really is a class that absolutely points towards you've got to nail that one lap. Mm. It's one lap. And Absolutely, Antonio Fuoco did that half a second clear, and that's night and day. And as a, an indication of how night and day, the next two cars are separated by eight thousandths of a second. And worth pointing out, Julian Andlau, a fourth place for Proton. Proton didn't have a hypercar on the grid at Spa last year. They didn't roll out their hypercar till Monza.